All right, Matt, so we're switching things up with Fight Night Picks in lieu of having just an absurd fight schedule that we don't know when things are exactly. going to happen. And it's unfortunate because we can't get into our typical fight picks, which I know a lot of you at home, that's how you're familiar with this. You're not familiar with the fighter interviews or the old podcasts or the maybe even the website, which exists and still gets updated that's all true. the time. But still, this week we're starting something new. It's called Parry and Counter. We're getting into your fan questions. We put out the request over on uh, Instagram and YouTube. And in the community section, we get a lot of great responses. And from Cameron Romanik, the question is, Thoughts on Curtis Blades being a long-reigning heavyweight champ? With his striking finally coming together, I think he can really beat anyone in the division. Yes, I think he can finally beat Nganu. Now, Matt, Curtis Blades... He's what? 13 and 2 yes. is his total record. The two losses to Francis and Gone. He's got a 1 0 contest on there, but that was because, as Stephen A would put it, he got into the weed, which in 2020, I mean, a lot of leagues uh, getting rid of that yeah, is a lot. substance issue. So um, interesting to see there, and maybe uh, they would never go back, but to change it. But still, he's 13 and 2. He's got a bit of a mountain to climb ahead of him because you've got Nganu, you've got DC, and you've got Stipe Miocic. But I think it's an interesting question because we don't really know if there's going to be a trilogy fight between Stipe Miocic and Daniel Cormier. That's true. And that's the problem with saying, oh, this person's going to be champ by the end of this year. It's so hard to predict just due to matchmaking because the heavyweight championship's been defended pretty much once a year for the last four years. Uh, DC and Stipe fought two summers ago. They fought last summer. And then they're expecting to fight this summer. And that's just holding up the division for a long time. And if you're a guy like Francis Ngannou, and I know Curtis Blaze has looked really good as of late, but if a guy's beat you twice and he's waiting for the title too, I don't care how many wins you get, he's still going to be ahead of you in that title queue. Uh, especially if he beats Yalzinho in his next fight, if that fight even does happen. But I don't see Curtis Blaze being a long-reigning champion. I think he can be champion one day, but the problem is he's openly admitted Stipe Miocic and him used to train together, and their wrestling is about the same. But when you look at their striking... Stipe is so much better, it's not even funny. Like, Curtis Blades has improved his striking, but I think we need to remember, it's easy to look good striking against a guy like Justin Willis or Shamil Abdurakimov. It's really hard to look good striking against Daniel Cormier, and that's what Stipe was able to do. Like, Stipe's fighting all-time great after all-time great after all-time great. He's got one of the best chins ever. He doesn't get tired for a heavyweight. He has rocks in his hands, and he's got really good wrestling. That's the perfect heavyweight fighter right now, and unless DC beats him, uh, they have another crazy fight where he takes a lot more damage, and then eventually, you know, you do Blade Stipe, or you do a Ganu Stipe, and just hope Blades can beat the winner of that in the end. Uh, it's just, A, it's going to take two years at least until Blades gets that title fight, and B, he's either going to have to beat Daniel Cormier, all-time great, Stipe Miocic's all-time great, or Francis Ngannou, a guy who just kind of has his number, and I don't see him being that long-reigning champion. I don't want to say he can't become champion for a certain amount of time, but there's a reason the heavyweight champion's only been defended three times as their record for most title offenses. It's such a hard division to stay on top of just because you have guys who are 240, 260 pounds. If you hit me right on the chin, you would probably knock me out. If someone who's 260 pounds hits another guy who's 260 pounds on the chin, they're definitely going to knock each other out. So I just don't see it. I think he's got a really good skill set. I think he's going to be able to beat a lot of top fighters for a really long time. I just don't really know if I see that long reigning title defense in him. This is where it gets awkward, and there's a name that you didn't bring up in the Curtis Blades win streak. It's it's the Junior Dos Santos one that he had in his last Here's one. And the I problem, know though. Junior Dos Santos doesn't look like the guy no. that he used to. He doesn't look like the guy that was fighting Cain Velasquez. He doesn't even look like the guy that fought Stipe Miocic for the belt back in Dallas, and that was quite some time ago. But what happened in that fight? Stipe knocked him out in under a minute. And even in the Curtis Blades fight, Curtis Blades, again, he looked great in that he fight. Did. He looked great in the Abdur Kima fight. He was all over him. Oh, that, the Abdur wrestling Kima. is so good. He's arguably the best pure wrestler right now at 265. Oh, pounds. it's not arguable. He is the best wrestler. It's just, he's going to have to stand for some period of time with those other guys. Because I can guarantee you this. He's not just going to take down Stipe Miocic at will like he was able to do with Abdur Kima. Abdur Kima is a good wrestler, but Stipe is just, he's a good athlete and a good wrestler. So if Blaze is going to want to fight them for any period of time, those top guys, he's going to have to stand on his feet with them. And Junior Santos in that fight was so worried about the takedown. Every time Curtis Blaze even ducked a little bit, Junior Santos sprawled, put his hands down, was ready for the takedown. And it worked a few times. He was able to stuff the takedowns, and it was a striking match for the majority of it. But the one time... That Blades is able to hit him. He faked a takedown, hit him with an uppercut, then a right hand. It's always a threat of the wrestling, which is really opening up Curtis Blades striking. But when you have guys who have the foundation of wrestling, like a Stipe or a DC, they're not nearly as afraid of getting taken down because they can get back up. And you're going to have to stand. And when you stand with Junior Santos, it's not the same as when you did in 2013. 
Standing with Stipe is like standing with Junior Santos in 2013. You're not going to be able to do it for that long because he's just going to land power shot after power shot after power shot. And it's going to look like an Ngani fight after a while. And this is where it gets a little tricky too. And you're, I don't think we're getting to the nuts and bolts of it because if we look at the top 10 right now, the majority of the division is well into their 30s, if not into their 40s. And you have to consider certain fighters like Alistair Overeem, the champion, your Stipe Miocic, Daniel Cormier, probably only has one fight left and it's against Stipe. Two, but again, with the eye injury, you oh, have to it. wonder. No, no. There's, there's so many moving pieces in terms of health and age at 265 pounds. And that's the division where, listen, it's hard to age out because power is the last thing that goes. You see what Mark Hunt was able to do or... Frank Mir and Roy Nelson, they're still fighting in Bellator. So you can see it in the UFC where these guys are able to get a little bit older but still have some flash and flair and rank highly in the division. But we're starting to get newer talent. Okay. We're starting to get the Cyril Gons or the Augusto Sakai's or even Tanner Bozer's got a fight coming up against uh, Jeff Hughes. Yarzino Rosenstrike's a good example. But here's so. the problem. Francis Ngannou is the same age as Curtis Blades and he's beaten twice by knockout. It's really hard to even match that fight up for the third time unless one guy has the title. So unless Francis gets the title and Curtis Blades goes on such a streak where it's undeniable he has to fight him for the third time, they're just not going to set it up again. So that's my problem. It's going to take so much time for Curtis Blades to even get the title shot because there's such a long jam. And I know we can say that for a lot of divisions. There's a lot of good guys out there that probably do deserve title shots, but there's someone who's a little bit more deserving. That's the problem. It's the Justin Gaethje-Tony Ferguson problem. Justin Gaethje, if he fought in any other time period, would have a title shot by now. It just so happens there's another guy with a 13-fight win streak ahead of him. So... Yeah. It's just really hard to say. And that's it at heavyweight. We can't overlook the fact that Blades is going to fight Alexander Volkov. If it happens, again, that's booked for June in Saskatoon, Old Tube Town, getting the fights again. Last time they were there, Max Holloway headline in that one. Charles Oliveira. Exact injury. But um, you've got that fight coming up. And then again, there's always, like, we were talking dark horses in the lightweight division. You can check that video out as well. Fabrice Silverdoom's fighting out, or that's Alexei Olenek. Like, there's so many weird fights coming up that you never know. We like I know Volkov beat Verdum and that was a pretty bad fight for Verdum. Verdum matches up so well with Curtis Blades, it's not even funny. Because Curtis Blades is gonna have to stand with him, and Verdum is way better at striking, it's not even close. It's not, because Verdum's gonna tie clench him and he's gonna knee him a lot. And he throws kicks, Blades doesn't. But Blades is gonna take him down. And if Kane Velasquez isn't even able to take Verdum down without getting choked out, Curtis Blades is gonna have his hands full. So that is a really good dark horse, even though he's coming off a suspension. That's a really good pick, actually. Like, I definitely didn't think of that. Uh, I still think, I don't know if there is really a dark horse, and that's just my honest opinion. The heavyweight division's sort of been stagnant for a while with the whole steep ADC, steep ADC. Uh, of course, Francis is always gonna be there. But you just kind of have these top five guys that are all going to keep on fighting each other. So it's hard for the rest of the, the division to just kind of like loosen up and develop sort of a flow. But uh, Verdum would probably be your best pick for Dark Horse of the Division. We'll see what happens. Really looking forward to it. A great question there. And keep them coming for Fight Night Picks. Perry and Counter. Got to remember that one. But new segment from us. You can find it in the playlist here. And make sure you check out the rest of our fan questions. You submit some of your own. And Matt, as we always say, Fight Night Picks. Let's get into let's it. Let's get into it.